You have one minute left. Presentation begins. You may now begin your presentation. Singapore, home to four million people, a melting pot of diverse races and cultures. Singapore is happy to host this year's SIFE competition, and on behalf of Singapore, we would like to extend not just a small welcome, but a very big welcome to all our guests. We are here today representing the Singapore Polytechnic SIFE team, and what makes our team so special this year is the fact that we've drawn strengths of students from multiple disciplines that en enable us to deliver solutions that merge both business and science. Our story today takes us to India. India, as you know, is the 12th largest economy in the world and one of the main growth engines of Asia. Despite its phenomenal development, 25% of India's population still live below the poverty line of one US dollar a day. One such community is the village of Sevapur located in Tamil Nadu, in the south of India. While we were there, we saw the heart of Singapore. We didn't just get a surface look at the harsh conditions that exist there. We saw that this was a living and breathing and vital part of how the entire rural area functions. And what was truly inspiring was the enduring human spirit that we saw underlying the whole community. At the heart of Singapore is the Inba Seva Sangam, or ISS, an NGO that provides help to the village. It runs a boarding school for the village children, providing free education, lodging, and food. Prabhu is one of the many children at the ISS's boarding school. Through ISS, Prabhu and the 200 children at the ISS's boarding school will have their chance to live their dreams and have a better tomorrow. These aspirations may seem achievable to you, but they are often fraught with many hurdles. The good work of the, this ISS is to help these children to overcome these hurdles. The unique position of this ISS makes it a pillar of leadership and guidance for the Singaporeans. Currently, ISS runs on external and government donations to fund its annual 500,000 rupees expenditure. However, in recent years, ISS has been experiencing decreasing donations that harm and threaten the continuity and survival of their programs that benefit the villagers. As such, SIF SP wanted to help ISS move from the dependency on external funding to financial independence. We had three main objectives. First, provide the ISS with a sustainable source of income to fund the boarding school. Second, to impart business and success skills via knowledge transfer to the ISS which would enable continued growth of the ISS even after complete team withdrawal in an estimated three years. And third, to build scalable and sustainable systems that ensures the provision of low-cost goods to the villagers in Singapore. And to achieve our objectives, the team developed three projects. One, the Greenhouse Initiative. Two, the Organic Compost Production Facility. And three, the Computer Education Laboratory. Let's start with the first project, its Greenhouse Initiative. In February, SIF SP realized that each farmer had two acres of land. However, 
only 25% of this land was arable. That means the other 75% was not suitable for direct crop cultivation. And in order to fully utilize the land, farmers could first grow these saplings in arable land and then transplant them into the non-arable areas. This method will enable the saplings to survive the initial harsh growth period. We also found that the farmers do not have the time and expertise to grow these saplings. This is an opportunity for ISS to first grow the saplings and then sell them to the farmers. Therefore, we built a greenhouse at a cost of 60,000 rupees that was donated by the Singapore Youth Council and Singapore Polytechnic. The greenhouse reduces sunlight and it simulates an environment of reduced temperature and increased humidity. This would increase yield. Specifically, we were able to increase the cultivation success rate and shorten the cultivation period. As for the success rate of sapling germination, it increased from 60% to 90%. And the cultivation period was shortened by an average of 50%, that is from about 28 days to 14 days. There were two production periods, from March to May and from June to August. A total of 15,000 saplings were produced. Each sapling was sold at 7 rupees to the villagers. The sale of the saplings had generated a revenue of over 100,000 rupees for the ISS. The greenhouse also attracted many visitors from the district schools. To further boost income, we advised ISS to charge an admission fee of 2 rupees. From March to mid-September, about 2,000 visitors toured the greenhouse. These visits gave ISS an additional income of about 3,800 rupees. In an overview, the greenhouse project has brought ISS a revenue over 128,000 rupees for the entire year. Let's now move on to the organic compost production project. Saplings require fertilizers to grow. However, the use of artificial fertilizers in the long run will increase the acidity of the soil, leading to plant death and land dereliction. Now that the greenhouse was producing saplings, our team saw the opportunity for the production and sale of organic compost to the farmers. The organic compost would provide the nutrients necessary for plant growth and at the same time protect the land. In February 2008, Saif SP designed and built a decomposition plant and a compost production shed at a cost of 16,000 rupees. The decomposition plant makes use of dung collected from cows that the ISS rear. The dung is channeled from the entry pit into the accumulation chamber. In the accumulation chamber, the dung decomposes and produces methane gas. The gas is then channeled through pipes leading to outlets where it will be used. The build-up of this methane gas pressure then pushes out the top layer of dung from the accumulation chamber to the exit pit. This product is known as digested dung. This methane gas is channeled to the home of this ISS caretaker where it powers two stoves and a lamp. It provides ISS with an average of 500 rupees in monthly energy savings. Between March to mid-September, the, the total energy monthly savings amounted to 3,500 rupees. With the usable lifespan exceeding 20 years, the use of methane gas is ISS's first step towards a greener tomorrow. And now back to the compost production shed. Compost production makes use of digested dung together with other farm waste and minerals. Our compost production shed acted as an initial pilot model to ascertain feasibility. Our compost production pilot model was a huge success and the ISS replicated the model on a larger scale. In June this year, ISS modified the model and built three new large trenches under the sheltered and moist conditions of thick trees. In three months, the trenches produce an astounding 18,000 kilograms of organic compost. So that four rupees per kilogram to the farmers, it has generated 72,000 rupees in revenue and a profit of close to 55,000 rupees. 
This translates to an annual profit of an impressive 220,000 rupees. By mid-September 2008, 50% of Silver Paws farmers had switched to using organic compost. And this ensures the long-term protection of their land from dereliction. Also in September, the world-renowned Institute for Market Ecology, or IMO, certified the ISS compost production facility as organic and eco-friendly. In addition, the ISS compost production facility was also certified by Demeter, the international certification body. Saif Espy encouraged the ISS to go for the certification as he would create trust. Also, our wonderful mentor, Dr. Adrian Ilangovan, has made several trips down to the facility to ensure that quality control is in place and that the ISS follows guidelines set by the IMO and Demeter. The third project is the Computer Education Program. We realized that one of the administration staff at ISS, Murgesh, was trained in computer skills. This is an opportunity for ISS to set up a computer education business and conduct classes for the villages. Singapore Polytechnic donated 16 computers for this purpose. In addition, we also conducted a massive promotion campaign that was targeted at 200 households. We distributed flyers and visited houses. The adoption rate for this program was high because the children and women folk understand and saw the value of IT skills for their future. This pilot program was conducted over a period of two weeks where we imparted basic Microsoft Office skills to a class of 24 villagers. The pilot program was a huge success as there was more demand for such classes. In addition, Murgesh also became the chief instructor and project manager. The computer education program was also subsidized by the Indian government. Ladies and gentlemen, from July to August alone, the computer education program has trained 80 villages and has generated a profit of 16,000 rupees. This translates into an annual profit of 96,000 rupees. Let's now look at the combined financial results of our three projects. The three projects translates to an annual profit of 444,200 rupees for the ISS. Considering that ISS has an annual expenditure of about 500,000 rupees, a profit of 444,000 rupees brings us that close to helping them achieve full financial independence. Nonetheless, this sum of money can provide food, lodging and education for some 150 children for the whole year, feed 30 families for the entire year, and purchase 40,000 textbooks for the school. 444,000 rupees may seem insignificant to many people, but it is almost the annual expenditure needed to fund ISS's boarding school providing an incredibly positive environment for children like Prabhu to grow up in. Undoubtedly, our projects have fulfilled the six SIFE criteria. ISS has internalized the notion that they should abide by these criteria so that they will be successful in the future. Let's first look at market economics. ISS learned about supply and demand and how their supply should be determined by market demand. This was clearly illustrated when their saplings were constantly sold out and they were swamped with requests for more. ISS had applied the knowledge. They are now in the process of building another greenhouse to double their production capacity. In the case of compost production, ISS learned about price mechanism and they found that High demand would push up the price of compost, which restrict accessibility to the farmers. To allow all farmers to purchase this crucial farming component at a fair price, the ISS learned that supply needed to be increased. And they did so by expanding their compost production to three huge trenches. In terms of success skills, the ISS learned about skills that would help them succeed in the global economy they learn about product line extensions. We advise ISS that instead of just selling saplings, 
they could sell complementary organic compost. This would create a cohesive and synergetic package for the farmers. In addition, the ISS learned about alternative sources of income. The greenhouse became more than just a sapling production facility. It became an attraction site, providing additional income for the ISS. ISS also learned that business is perpetual. Decisions that they make today will impact them tomorrow. As such, ISS is planning for its future. They are building yet another greenhouse and even more trenches to multiply their production. Our initial pilot compost pit has now been converted to producing higher value compost, which provides them with even more profit in the long run. Entrepreneurship is all about risk and innovation for profit. The ISS has now embodied the values of entrepreneurship. By investing in saplings, the ISS has internalized the notion that without risk, no profit will come. The ISS is in the process of building a second greenhouse to double its supply. The ISS also made use of innovation to increase their production levels, growing saplings successfully and at a faster rate. As entrepreneurs, they modified and expanded our compost pr production model to three new trenches. Today, we can see the great profits that the ISS have made, but we must remember that the farmers have also been provided with low-cost goods to start and expand their existing businesses. The saplings that the farmers buy act as investments to increase plot utilization in the long run. The ISS is also financially literate, because for each of the three projects, an accounting system was set up, measuring the number of saplings sold, the number of visitors to the greenhouse, and the amount of compost purchased. We also imparted to them the importance of recording crucial data, such as their inventory of saplings and their production levels for compost. And lastly, we advised Mergish, the computer teacher, to monitor these figures carefully, because what they cannot monitor, they cannot improve. With this information at their fingertips, the ISS sees the powerful benefits of analyzing their costs, expenses, profits, and investments. In essence, our three projects were really about business ethics. The businesses that we set up at the ISS were much more than just profit-generating machines. They were social enterprises that provided a cohesive and synergetic package, giving the villagers a better tomorrow. Firstly, the saplings were sold at an extremely reasonable price of 7 rupees per sapling. These saplings gave farmers the means for greater plot utilization enabling them to increase their income and better their lives. Secondly, the organic compost was sold at a fair price of 4 rupees per kilogram. This enabled the farmers to purchase this vital farming input cheaply. Thirdly, the computer education program was about the transfer of technical skills and the education of a new generation. Priya was one of the top students in the district for the grade 10 exams. However, she's unable to afford further education. These computer skills will give Priya and many villagers like her job opportunities and hope. Our projects were also about changing mindsets. The greenhouse was a point of education for the children in the district, teaching them to respect the environment. More than 1,800 students have visited this greenhouse and have been impacted. The organic compost project converted 50% of Sebapu to organic farming. They have since abandoned artificial fertilizers which harm Mother Earth. Ladies and gentlemen, our projects were really about growing the community of Sebapo by providing them with long-term market and economic opportunities. But are these programs sustainable? Yes, there are over 33 villages in the vicinity that face the same issue of non-arable land as Sebapo. That's about 22,000 villages. The farmers in these villages will require saplings and compost as well, 
and the ISS is increasing its production. The ISS has hired two external trainers to help Murugish cope with the high demand for computer classes. Saif SB will continue to support the growth of these classes by donating more computers. But that's not all. Saif SP's work is ongoing. We are in the process of helping farmers diversify their risk. By the end of 2008, we will introduce large-scale mushroom cultivation for export. We have designed an exciting new brand to take these mushrooms international. Say mushrooms! In addition, <laughs> product packaging and a website have been created. Lastly, negotiations are underway with a local distributor and we are confident that by January 2009, we will see Seba Shrooms hit shelves in Singapore. In terms of team sustainability, we are an ever-growing family of Saif enthusiasts, working together to try and change the world. With a huge team of over 274 members, with over 100 in the first year, we are confident that our team will multiply Together with regular campus drives, a strong entrepreneurship concentration program that backs Scythe and great passion, I believe our team is here to stay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to build business models that matter and are scalable, whether it's in India or China or Nigeria for that matter, Canada. Business models that allow people to do it themselves because at the end of the day, it's about engagement. It's about understanding that people don't really want handouts. They want to make their own decisions and they want to solve their own problems. And by engaging with them, not only do we create much more dignity for themselves, but for us as well. So we should scrap the idea of an us and them world and start to grow into the idea of living together in a world that we share. Side SP for a better tomorrow. Thank you, Sykes, the floor. <laughs> Judges, you may now begin the question and answer period. Thank you. In your annual report, you mentioned Mata Ikan 360. Can you talk about that? I'm very interested in what you're doing, especially around the eco principles that you were able to engage in this project. Uh, maybe I could answer that question for you. But Mata, Mata Ikan is basically a project that we are conducting in Batam, in, in Indonesia. And we are basically taking some, uh, some large, tr large trenches that were formed, craters, right? That were formed by some of the floods that happened there. And they are, they are introducing some uh, species of fish into, into those craters to um, actually eat the uh, mosquito breeding problem that's over there. And that's just one of the projects. Um, amongst the other projects, we are also um, you know, introducing some... Wait, what, what else can you introduce? I apologize. The fish breeding will basically give new sources of income to the villagers there uh, by introducing new fish into these uh, sand craters, which are really as huge as lakes. Probably like this ballroom, the size of this ballroom is one crater. So we've got a couple of these craters, and it's a huge uh, opportunity. We're looking forward to that in... Uh, Soon, next year. Actually, we've started working on it already. Yeah. Um, there are seven of you up there. Can you tell me how much time each of you spent in Sevapur? Um, probably I can answer that question. It's my third time in India. It's been, it's altogether three trips that we have went from um, February all the way to September, um, just to ensure that we produce um, these projects, make sure that these projects run very well. Um, I bet every, the whole team has already gone there. And first trip, we have 24 members coming with us, followed by the second trip, we have about 10 members, and the third trip, we have eight members, just to ensure that this project goes very well. So it was a week at a time? Sorry? One week each time? Uh, okay, 24, uh, for the first trip is two weeks, for the second trip, it's about 10 days, and the third trip is about 8 days. Thank you. Uh, you. You talk about sustainability of the 33 villages in the area. 
have you gone to the second village yet? Yeah, we've already begun work on the second village, Vinobaji Puram. The third village that we have inside is Kadavu. Now, Vinobaji Puram is the nearest village to Sevapur. And um, Seva, uh, ISF, sorry, it has a lot of influence in uh, Vinobaji Puram as well. And um, the project has already begun there because some of the farmers in Vinobaji Puram actually also purchased these uh, saplings and the compost already from uh, the ISS's uh, supply and production. Um, how specifically did you transfer the knowledge to the people at the ISS so that they could continue on when you were no longer there? And how many people were you transferring that knowledge to? We're targeting, uh, we've, tar we've done like about 30 people in the ISS, including those who are managing the day-to-day -day operations of the greenhouse, the day-to-day -day operations of the organic compost pit. Because they need daily additions of the cow dung. They actually add like a couple of kg every day. And for the greenhouse, it just continues. And we have a couple of periods. So the technology really was transferred by the infrastructure, by us designing and then building this decomposition plant and the compost production. They understood that they needed to use the digested dung together with some other materials and let it sit for some uh, one and a half to two months before they could then use it as organic compost. And um, uh, Dr. Adrian Ilango has been back a couple of times to ensure that they have the science and the bulk nuts and bolts of the whole process really ironed out. Can, Can you talk about something that didn't go well this year and how you dealt with that as a team? I think Seva Shrooms is a, we were actually contemplating to have Seva Shrooms to be one of our key projects and but there was some apprehension because mushrooms is not really like the traditional, traditional um, crop that they would harvest or they would grow and also not really part of the Indian diet as well. So I think there's not much demand for it. So many of the farmers felt that if they were to uh, grow mushrooms or cultivate mushrooms, there wouldn't be a demand to sell. And uh, we had quite a lot of trouble to communicate or to convince them that uh, mushrooms was a really good way to diversify the risk. And hence, we've, we've sort of uh, only just managed to get it out in our last trip, you see. And so I think we'll see it next year, I suppose. And uh, there's also a problem with communication. So we, thankfully, we have some uh, Tamil students in our team, so they help us to communicate with the Singaporeans there. Teaching technology to India is quite an ambitious and new twist. Um, how did you make that decision as part of your program, and how did you select the actual community that you served? Right, Dr. Adrian Langovan, uh, one of our faculty, and our team advisor as well, he used to work in Trichy, which is really near to Sevapur. And what happened was that he was introduced to the ISS by a mutual friend, and then he introduced the project to us because he felt that we had the skill set to really help them in terms of the crop cultivation, the agri-technology, as well as the business uh, skills to bring, bring it forward as a social enterprise to provide these low-cost goods to the villagers and the farmers. So that was how we were introduced. And to maybe to add on, in terms of how we can transfer technology to these, to these farmers and the ISS, um, if you see the projects, a lot of them, all the, all the resources required, especially for the compost production, uh, come from the land itself. They use dried leaves, they use uh, minerals, they use earthworms from the soil. So it's all readily easily available and it's not very difficult to replicate, which they did on their own. And so I think that these projects were, were highly relevant to them and they could easily replicate it on their own without even, so it wasn't very uh, complicated, complex technology. It was rather, rather simple. So, uh out of uh, seven of you and the rest of the team, how did you structure responsibilities? Uh, how did you make decisions and, uh, and how did you go about uh, taking advantage of each one of your individual skills to move the project forward? We have a multidisciplinary team, so we have uh, quite a few talents in our team, I would say. And um, we have the design team, which designed the Seva Shrooms logo, as well as the uh, product packaging, and along with some flyers. We have the business students who then worked on the marketing, the economics of, of how we were going to uh, price the product lower than the market price such that it would uh, 
give accessibility to the farmers. And then we had the chemical life students, which were really important oops, because they provided the technology and the science know-how for us to transfer the technology. Um, I think Isma was really the leader of our team. Your time has expired. <laughs> Judges, please join me in thanking the Singapore Polytechnic Site Team from Singapore. In a few moments, we will introduce the next presenting team.